um, I think the point of all of that is that time does come to an end, that the human condition does come to an end, and that's how Islam contextualizes history, is that there is an end that is imminent. Um, again, I think for the individual person, the imminence of the end of time is always related to their own personal death. But there is an idea also. And then there's another important, I think a very important idea within the Islamic tradition, and that is that each generation will be less they will be fulfilling the idea of this dimensional Islam, of Iman, Islam, and Ihsan. They will not do it as well as the previous generation. That there is an idea that each generation is uh, a watered down version. There are periods of renewal historically, and the Prophet Muhammad did say that, that there would be renewers every hundred years or so. There would be people that come and renew. But the idea that it, it's not the same. I mean, I think the Muslims do have an idea, traditional Muslims anyway, that it's not so much progress, but quite the opposite. One of the things Rene Guénon pointed out about the rapid speed of progress, he said one of the things that we forget is increasing acceleration means going down, not up, right? That the idea of the modern world, and I think there's a lot of questioning now of the wisdom of the, you know, the idea, Bacon introduced the idea of progress, because prior to that the Christians did not have that idea within their world view of that we are progressing. They had quite a different idea. And I think ultimately from the Muslim worldview and, and also from uh, other traditional worldviews, that the, you know, the, the same ethical issues that, that, that Plato is positing through Socrates, you know, what is justice? You know, how do we lead a good life? What is a good life? These things, we have not come any closer, right, to really, you know, progressing in terms of our ethical nature, in terms of our spiritual nature. That although we have massive outward technology, uh, able to do extraordinary things, uh, bring the living back, bring the dead back to life, you know, uh, move mountains, quite literally. Despite that, we are still de dealing with basic human tendencies such as greed, lust, envy, slothfulness. It's hard to get away from those. And in some ways, uh, we're less aware of our own negative tendencies than perhaps peoples before us were, and more uh, filled with our own sense of hubris and our own sense of power. Although certainly the 20th century is a, is, is a century that has created a lot of disillusionment. You know, we've killed uh, 180 million people uh, this century alone in wars between human beings. And it's interesting that they weren't religious wars. They were ideological wars, you know, because one of the oftentimes critics of religion will point out, well, look how many people died in the name of, of religion. Well, look how many people died in the name of communism. Right? I mean, we forget that we're dealing with a human uh, species, that, that, that it's not, the religion is not the problem, man is the problem. Right? And if there's a humanizing factor in the human condition, as far as I'm concerned, it has been uh, religion, that religion is what has introduced into the human uh, being concepts like making beauty, uh, concepts like becoming conscientious, charity, right? Uh, caritas, you know, these, these things, the kairos, all of these things are coming out of religious traditions. And the Muslims always say in the end, God knows best. Um, I'm going to open it up for some questions. If people want to go, they're, believe me, you're most welcome to go. This is my last uh, talk that, that, you know, that I have with you. And I just would like to say uh, my presentations you know, I'm, I adhere to the teaching of Islam, and I do believe in Islam, and I tend to take a more devotional approach than, say, some other academic approaches. You know, that, that is my, I, I really try not to preach to people because I never have ever liked being preached to in my life. Um, so I really try to do that. But if it has come off as that, you know, I, I would apologize uh, to anybody if I said anything in any way that offended people or their tradition or their own beliefs that I also apologize for that. That was not my intention. If that was the result, then I would just ask that I would be excused for that um, graciously. 
And then I would uh, also just like to say that this has really been a very uh, good and enriching experience for me. It always is. And uh, I've been appreciative of the fact that Dar al-Islam has invited me back. But I would like to say this has been, a ver for me, a very good group. And, I and I'm not just, you know, I didn't say that to the last groups. I really have enjoyed this group uh, personally. You know, I think you've all been just really uh, just a good group. And, and you're all teachers, so you know a teacher likes nothing better than having good students. And, uh, and so I've honored and uh, grateful that that's been the case. So having said all that, I'll just say um, if anybody has any questions that I could answer or anything. <laughs>